Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's the weekend, thank heavens. Fear and Greed Index sitting at neutral. This is kind of expected, especially with the substantial outflows um, going out through those GBTC. Uh, it's, for me, it's a situation where I look at it and I say to myself, well, it's going out, but it's eventually going to come back in. So I think this is more of a tactic uh, that's being used uh, against the broader consensus, so to speak. But there are some good signs as we move into the weekend. It's a sea of green at the moment. We have to take this at face value. There's opportunities everywhere here. I caught 100% gain on Bonk um, very, very recently. It was a, a small trade I played with my meme uh, wallet over on uh, MEXE, but it, it paid off. I rode it to the top. I caught it at the bottom and it was a good day to say the least. It for me, it enables me to get more dry powder and then buy a little bit back in again and, and maybe put the dry powder I earned on Bonk on another meme coin because there's just so many of them being pushed from that Solana narrative, um, especially in 2024. I think a lot of the meme coins you're going to see are Solana driven meme coins. BTC is looking really good um, on the day a possible strong kind of breakout. We really need to see something substantial happen here. Otherwise, we probably are just going to continue to track sideways. There is good news, though. There's massive liquidations in the Bitcoin wallets area. Historical data sh says that this is a bullish signal. So at this point, on-chain data provider Santiment, which examined the liquidations in Bitcoin wallets, announced that there was a significant decrease in the total number of Bitcoin wallets pointing out the latest decline in BTC wallets was the fastest decline since the beginning of October when the rise began. Santiment stated that this situation is an indication of the impatience among investors. In the last four days alone, more than 487,000 wallets holding one BTC or less were liquidated according to data. You got a few people down here, uh, I think these have been pulled from Twitter. But they're more or less stating that the amount of total Bitcoin wallets have been declining at their swiftest rate since early October, just before the major bull cycle started. The crowd is showing a similar level of impatience this time around with over 487k wallets holding one BTC. This is really interesting. And I think this is what's kind of driving what we're seeing here. So hopefully this plays out over the weekend and we see a substantial breakout and everything follows it because this is truly one of LUNC's saving grace that it's not doing uh, what XRP did throughout all of these bull runs and kind of just didn't do anything. It didn't run uh, with the broader consensus, whereas we are seeing LUNC do that. So let's get over to LUNC. I'm still sort of tracking out <clears throat> this cup and handle. I really do think we're going to be seeing a more substantial play here as we move across uh, into April. And I really do think we are going to see something more like this, where we come up something like this, maybe not that vertical. Hey, possibly we could go vertical. It's not like we haven't done that many times in the past, but I think this is what the more long winded play is. Does this say there's no money to be made here. No, nope, there's tons of money to be made here. If there's 40%, 35%, 20% runs, even 10% runs, there's money there for leverage traders, for spot traders, for everybody to get in and out as this thing moves up. And this is kind of what drives volume. If you see more trading happening and more people are looking at the coin saying, well, there's opportunities there in and out, this can lead to substantial breakouts in the future. So everyone's going to be talking about the L1 task force core security upgrade. I think this is definitely the center of everybody's talking aside the paper job system and everybody's sort of thinking that that's an actual system that exists when it's not. It's just as good as having that proposal written on a piece of paper. It's not being developed. There's a lot of contradictions that I'm seeing people vote no to this, but they voted yes to Genuine Labs. And the reason for voting is simply because it doesn't abide by paid per job. But Genuine Labs doesn't ab abide by paid per job. It doesn't break uh, the individual tasks down into individual jobs like paid per job should be. So it's already been overridden, right? And these validators that are voting no to this are ha and have voted uh, yes to uh, Genuine Labs and it sets um, a wave of contradiction, so to speak, into the mix. And 
for me, I'm going to be voting yes. And the reason why I'm going to be voting yes is because of the contradictions. Paper jobs definitely not being abided by. People are cherry picking. We've got contradictions happening. And out of everything, the most important thing for this blockchain is for development to continue no matter what. Okay. Even if you develop a paid per job system, it's going to take you months to develop it anyway. Right. If, if the system was being developed, which it's not, and it isn't because there's too many arguments from the left, from the right of wanting a total permissionless system, a system with safeguards and firewalls and all of the little ins and outs you need for security for a blockchain like this. We've got so many people saying you're not abiding by governance and they're not abiding by governance. And there's just, it's just too much now that there's too much nitpicking. There's people saying no to one thing, people saying yes to another thing. For me, I'm going to stand by what I believe in, which is what we all voted for last phase, which was for genuine labs to start working, right? They've got more than one job bundled down in that. If you're going to nitpick, then you need to say to yourselves, well, why have we voted yes for this? But now everybody's voting no to this. It it makes no sense. It makes no sense whatsoever. The people that are hung up and saying that, oh, they should abide by governance and oh, they should do this and oh, it should be broken down into individual jobs. They're not abiding by governance. How long did it take for us to get a new Commonwealth set up? How long did we wait for them to hand over the adminships as requested by governance? Okay, so they're not abiding by governance to begin with, right? You've got so many different issues that surround this whole sort of narrative that's being pushed in a moment. I think it's very important for everybody to stand by what you believe in. Don't go around. Don't become a sheep. Stand by what you believe in. Delegate with who you think is doing the right things by this chain because we need people to be free thinking at this point. It's getting uh, ridiculous to say the least, I would say. Just because of these contradictions, it, it's, a, it's a sign of what's really going on uh, behind the scenes and how the feeling really is. So I'm going to be voting yes it's probably all going to get shut down because of the paper job system, people wanting that. But you can't magic a system up out of nowhere. You're still going to need to go through the same route for community pool spend for the paid per job system. It's not just going to magic itself out of thin air. It's not going to happen. The last paid development team was back last year, halfway through the year on the sixth month of the year. That was the last time we as a blockchain paid a development team. So how have we managed to get all of the DCM and all of the different ins and outs, the security upgrades, the, the patch upgrades, all of the different upgrades we've had, how have we managed to get them if we haven't paid any developers since the sixth month of last year? Where everybody's been working for free. Everybody's been working on this blockchain. And I think a lot of people want to have their cake and they want to eat it too. And I'm just being blunt here. I, I, I'm just saying it how it is. I'm going to be voting yes for the simple fact that I voted yes for Genuine Labs. That in itself overrid paid per job to begin with, even though paid per job is optional and an alternative route, right? So even if it was a working system, it doesn't mean anybody has to abide by it. That was the whole point of the thing to begin with. It was just an alternative. So that makes all of the arguments completely irrelevant, considering that you could still go through the original route of proposing a bulk amount of work, getting approved and getting paid out. And it's as simple as that. You can't restrict it. You have to allow people to decide what routes they want to take. All you can do in these circumstances, right, is provide optional tools for people to use. So like I said, it's really important to stick by what you know. These people have worked their backsides off for the past six, seven months. No paychecks, nothing. We've had DCMs, we've had all of these different things. And I'm going to stick by them. I believe that if we've paid genuine labs, they're not abiding by the paid per job. Nobody's abiding by the paid per job then it shouldn't apply suddenly just to the L1 task force that they have to abide by it. They have to go and build it and develop this system that's simply not going to work. And if anybody thinks they can get it to work, if you're a part of a development group, 
by all means, make it happen. Build this system and get it implemented, honestly, because it would be the best thing for this chain to have everything paid per job. And that's the idea with labor market. That's the idea with warp protocol. Those are identical tools to what the aim is behind pay per job. You should go out and you should do some research on those. I'll try to leave links to them in the description. You'll probably understand how complex a system like this is to begin with. And there's all different ways that you can cut this down. You can slim it down into a more simplified system, but it still raises the two key questions. Permissionless or KYC? Security or flaw? It, it's really, really obvious that you shouldn't implement a, K, a, a permissionless system for something where someone could just alter the block state themselves and <clears throat> start moving coins around. They could enforce a blacklist. They could do all sorts of crazy things and they could just be some random person from another chain who's got no investment in LUNC other than holding a substantial short on the chain as they categorically shut it down. And these are, anybody who thinks these risks don't, like they're not there, they're there. These people exist, they're everywhere. There's substantial groups in different countries that run big schemes like this, where they do these long-winded chess plays to gain control of a chain, to shut it down and drain it for all its liquidity assets, and then hold substantial shorts throughout all of it. It's not something we want to be part of. And this is all part of a permissionless system of just allowing everybody and anyone to develop and upload whatever code they want. Behind all of this, right, you still need to have a central authority that <clears throat> checks the code, merges the code into the code base that's agreed, right? And these people, just to finish the video off here, these people who are saying, oh, you're not abiding by governance. You're not doing all of these different things. You don't work with us, right? These are the people out of the four different development teams. So out of TCC, Genuine Labs, the L1 Task Force, and Lunk Development Group, who are all working um, on the same repository, um, all working together. You've got this one group who are like, no one works with us. We created our own repository. Oh, here's our new white paper. And if you go and you actually read that white paper and you break it down, it's, it literally centralizes everything behind a DAO. And there's so many threats that are just out there right now. I think the community is confused. This is my honest perspective of what's realistically going on. The, the voting, the just the sheer back and forth thing. And ah, oh, it, it gets on my nerves sometimes. I honestly, like I said, regardless of everything, the arguments, the bickering, uh, people wanting paper job, people not wanting it, um, all of the different things, the development of the chain has to go on, right? Bitcoin halves in April. The chain must go on. If you had worked the past six to seven months for free, even whilst you're on holiday in Australia with your family, Does that not ring bells? Does that not like chime in? Would would you do that? Would you give six, seven months of your time for free? All of the time up, hours of the night, answering people's questions, developing code, checking bugs and doing all of these different things, building like the dynamic commission. How would you feel? You know, let me know in the comment section. Folks, have a nice weekend. Stay safe, stay humble, stay aware. And as always, I'll catch you in the next one.